Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today we are sitting outside on my porch in the morning, enjoying the birds and the sun, and it's spring here in New Zealand, almost summer, and so I just thought I'd film outside. So today I'm going to talk about 20 things, 20 things that surprised me uh, that were just normal things in New Zealand. Uh, now, some of these I've touched on in previous videos, but in this video, you're gonna get the summation of the 20 things that New Zealanders do that are just normal here, that it was like, oh, this is just normal here. It kind of surprised me. So you're not gonna wanna miss it. You're gonna wanna listen to all 20 because I tell stories throughout and it's gonna be a good one. So stay tuned, here we go. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a great all-in-one platform to get your business online quickly. So I hope you get to hear the beautiful sounds of nature here in New Zealand as I am talking to you today uh, because I love it. The birds are literally my favorite here in New Zealand. So, but let's get started. 20 things I have to talk to you about that surprised me that are just normal in New Zealand, which I love. So number one, can we talk about beans on toast for breakfast, okay? Because I was at a place that I paid for breakfast and they served like baked beans, like beans out of a tin or a can, depending on where you're from, on toast. Like that's an acceptable breakfast. Now I know a lot of people around the world eat beans for breakfast and eat beans for most meals, but I was like, are we being serious? Like it's like a piece of white bread with beans on toast. Totally normal, something that you eat here. Didn't know that, so that was an adjustment. Number two, these fruit stands uh, where you sell eggs, sometimes they even sell poo, manure, <laughs> on the side of the road, like you just, like it's, they'll have these stands and they'll have like a little thing where you can put the money in and it's just like on the trust system where you can just put the money in, take some eggs and they'll put like a price on it or they'll bag up some spices or some fruit that they have. Uh, I just actually did a trip down to um, Blenheim area and there's stands everywhere. And in fact, we went on some garden tours there and there, some of them, one of the ladies had like this fig farm and I'm like, well, where do you sell your figs? I mean, she has hundreds of trees and she literally sells them all in the stand out front her of her house <laughs> like it's not like someone's standing there and taking the money like it's just you can totally trust people here i guess i am sure that there's ones that get stolen from but yeah there's literally just fruit stands where they sell eggs and fruit or whatever else they have that they want to sell just on the side of the road it's kind of everywhere here it's amazing i love that about new zealand number three it's an interesting concept to me here in New Zealand where people just leave work when, you know, their time, their time, it's their time to leave work. So if they're supposed to be done at four, even like I've even seen it where like people are like working with a customer or in the middle of a project that really wouldn't take more than maybe 20 minutes to finish. Like, oh, it's four o'clock, it's time to go. And they just like get up and leave. Like that's an acceptable thing here. And in the States, it's not. Like, it's not even acceptable probably to work within the hours that you're contracted. You're just expected to get the job done. And if it takes you the extra 20 minutes, then you're going to stay and do the extra 20 minutes. But, <laughs> like, it's just like little four o'clock time to go. So it's, it's actually like, you, I guess you don't even have to be uber efficient. I mean, you're just, you're just there doing your job the best you can. And then you're just going to go. Oh, do you hear that? It's so beautiful. Okay, number four. Let's talk about the fact that people will walk around barefoot. People just walk around barefoot. So if you're flying into New Zealand and you're a visitor or you're moving here, you'll just get off the plane and you'll walk down the street and people will be barefoot. You can even go into stores being barefoot. Yep, I don't really have anything more to say about that. Just you can be barefoot in New Zealand. Number five, it's interesting here that nobody ever asks you what you do for a living. So in the U.S., if, if you meet somebody for the first time, like, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so, what do you do for a living? Da -da -da. And that's what you talk about. That's always like kind of the first thing that you talk about. 
other than like maybe the weather. <laughs> but in New Zealand, like people don't ask each other. They have like this tall poppy syndrome here where, you know, you can't talk about yourself being better than anybody else or, you know, it's just not cool, which is great. Like I, I think that that's the, the humble attitude is preferable to be honest, but it's just so interesting. It's just like, it's just normal to not talk about work. Like I've, I've mentioned in other videos that, you know, I've had friends that I've known for years and still don't know what they do for a living. <laughs> and then you find out, you're like, oh, I'm quite surprised that that's what you do for a living. I had no idea because it's not talked about. It's not important here. What you do for a living is not that important. Okay, and then number six, fish and chips on the beach. Can we talk about this? First of all, eating in general in the sand, not great. Like, why do we want to get sand and everything? But here it's like completely normal life to just get your fish and chips, which is all kind of folded up in like all these big pieces of paper and you like unfold it out on the beach and you just eat it there. Yeah. I guess that's a new concept for me that we're just going to eat on the beach. Like, I mean, I, it's not like you wouldn't have a picnic or something, but I just don't think that sand is generally the preferable place to eat uh, food. And so, but here it's just like what you do on like a Friday night um, or, you know, what you would do on the weekend. Like it's a, like a, like it's a normal thing. And like, that's what we're going to eat on the beach. So just another thing that surprised me. Okay, and number seven, let's talk about the crosswalks, the zebra crossings. What do you call them here? I don't think it's called crosswalks, but when you are, you know, you go out and do a crosswalk, people just walk out into the crosswalk. Like I, I feel like not everybody looks. Like they just assume that cars are gonna stop. And that makes me stressed out because I'm happy to stop, but I don't always see you and you just walk out. And so it stresses me out, but yeah. So it's just totally normal in New Zealand to just walk out and do the crosswalk and expect people to stop. So if you are traveling to the US, specifically like New York City, don't do that. They don't follow any rules like that. Um, really any big city in the US, don't do that. <laughs> okay, and number eight, let's talk about white bread. It is very normal in New Zealand for things to be served on white bread, specifically their sausages. So if you go to a sausage sizzle, if you buy something from it, it'll always be a sausage on white bread with tomato sauce or ketchup. Okay. Uh, so don't be alarmed by that. I just know that in the US, you know, you just generally don't ever serve anything on white bread. And so it seems, you know, unusual. And so just good to know. It's perfectly fine. It's good like that. It's easy. It's cheap. Um, and then they also have like their cheese rolls. I haven't actually really had one because I'm trying to wait till I go to the South Island is also on white bread. And so, yeah, so keep that in mind. Sausages are served on white bread and that is totally normal here in New Zealand. So it just was a little bit surprising. Okay, and number nine, can we talk about F posts? When you get off the plane, you in the airport and you need to buy something, a coffee, a little, some gum, whatever it is that you need, they're going to say, is that F post? And you're like, what? So it means like electronic funds transfer in the US, they ask you debit credit. It basically is the same as a debit. So it's just not, it's not like um, run by Visa MasterCard, like a debit system would be. It's just literally just moving money directly from your bank. They're very comfortable with doing that here. So yeah, so F post is what that is. And so you're welcome because you're going to get here and you're going to be like, you know, people were like, I, I just remember he just kept, I couldn't totally tell what they were saying. So you already have an accent involved. And then they're saying F post, which is what? <laughs> and so I said, I'm not sure, <laughs> you know, like a couple of times and I'm like, sure, just pay with that. And it worked and it went through and you just never know when using international cards and stuff, if it's going to work, but yeah. So F post means electronic funds transfer, whatever. It's just the same as debit. That's what you need to know when coming to New Zealand. I don't know about you, but I have been putting off creating my website until I found my solution with Squarespace. 
you guys are going to love this product. They have so many beautiful templates to choose from. You just pick your template and then you go in and just add the details of your business and literally within one day, I was able to get my website up and running. Another feature that I love on Squarespace is that they have this social sharing where my community can just go right out into my YouTube channel, my TikTok channel, which is where most of my uh, content exists. And so it's really nice that I can connect directly from Squarespace. Other features that Squarespace offers that are really great is their, the fact that you can collect donations, you can do email campaigns from it. It's just overall really great. I personally also love the analytics. I always like to know what's going on behind the scenes, who's really um, reaching me on my webpage. And that's just such a nice feature as well. I highly recommend that you check out Squarespace. Take some time today to go to squarespace.com and check out your free trial. And then when you're ready to purchase your website or your domain, you get 10% off with the link below. Okay, and number 10, along those same lines is the concept of the bank transfer uh, and that you can just give your account number out to people, just anybody. If you're buying something off Facebook Marketplace or off of Trade Me or anything, like it's totally normal to just give people your bank transfer and just do bank transfer. It's amazing. It's literally probably at least in the top three or five things that I love about New Zealand is managing money and paying for things is so easy. You guys don't understand. It's not like that in the US. Me just even banking in the US from here is so ridiculously hard. That's probably another video. Um, but yeah, bank transfer. So when you buy anything, you literally people give you your their account and you move the money into their account and they can, if it's the same bank, they can see it immediately or it's, it's pretty quick anyway. What? Totally normal to do that here. Totally surprised me. Don't have to write checks. Don't have to like send a check. So easy. Oh, I love it. So good. Number 11. Okay. It's totally normal to hear for... Okay, first of all, coffees here come with two shots. The standard coffee will get two shots. You don't have to ask for two shots. They're not just giving you one, they're giving you two. Unless you go to Starbucks here, they're only giving you one because that's the Starbucks way. Anyway, two shots, but it's just normal for people to have two or three coffees, those strong coffees a day. Like just when I've worked in the city, now it's not everybody, you know, a lot of people drink tea, but it is totally like, yeah, let's go get a coffee. Let's go get a morning tea, afternoon tea, getting another coffee. Totally normal to drink really strong coffees all day, which I love, but you know, then you kind of get a little addicted and you start getting headaches if you don't have it. So I don't do that. I just have one uh, a day, but yeah, that's totally normal here in New Zealand. Okay, number 12. Okay, you know what is really surprising is like when I've gone to camps or I've gone to retreat centers, like it's totally normal for like places to create like their own slides, uh, their own climbing walls, their own like, yeah, like, you know, like water slides, like it's very Kiwi ingenuity like, okay, but you know, there's no regulation around it. There's no, you know, I mean, they have to be safe, but it's not the same in the US. Like you don't have the liability issues and the suing potential. Um, so they just create these really fun things for kids and really anybody of any age <laughs> uh, to go on on these things. And that's really just like normal. And they just create very efficient ways to do things. Like when you have large groups and very sustainable things like the, like, uh, one place, one camp that I was at, they had like this big tub and we all use the same water to wash dishes and then put it away. Everybody brings their own dish and washes it and like that's normal. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's very cool. It's just like very cool the way that they do that. Bring your own cup, bring your own dish, bring your own uh, spoon or, you know, you use what they have and you just wash it right there. So anyway, just a lot of Kiwi ingenuity. I noticed when we are looking at like retreat centers or uh, camps, that's very cool. Okay, number 13, when you go to a cafe, now let me tell you, there are cafes everywhere. You know how in the US there's like gas stations everywhere? No, here there's cafes, cafes everywhere. But it's just normal guys to eat out of that glass. I think, I think I've mentioned this in other videos. It took me like two years to eat out of there. <laughs> because like to me, like in the US, that's normally like display of food that like you wouldn't normally eat. 
that they would then make separately, like they would display it. Maybe, I don't, I think, I mean, the only place I can think of that does that in the U.S. is Starbucks, but you know, in bigger cities, there's going to be more of that, but like, yeah. So like, it took me a while, but they actually take it and they heat it up. They put some salad on the side. They sometimes give you sauce that goes with it. And it's good. It's great. Like I have no problem with that now, but man, at first that was weird to me. It just surprised me that this is totally normal that we're just going to eat something out of the glass because it was like made that day and it's totally fine. But in my mind, like a lot of the stuff in the U.S. that would be in the glass would be like not real, would be like plastic. I mean, sometimes there's those diners where they have like the cake that kind of goes in a circle and the pies. <laughs> you remember those? <laughs> And you just kind of pull one out when you want it. Okay, so that's fine. I don't know. It's just not a lot of food behind glass in the U.S. Number 14, totally normal hanging your clothes on a line. Everybody hangs their clothes outside. So it's great. It's an adjustment. Uh, I've definitely looked down upon, frowned upon because I have a dryer. It's okay. It's okay. You can look down on it. Um, I've done the calculations. It's not that expensive to dry your clothes in a dryer, just so you know. But like, yeah, everybody hangs everything out on the line. And it's actually a very therapeutic process. And it's also like, I mean, I'm from Wisconsin where you have a s significant part of the year freezing cold and it's not even possible to do that. And so I think that that's probably why it isn't a tradition. Whereas here it's, you know, it's nice all year, except for when it's raining. I just feel like people go through a lot of effort here though, like in the winter time and when it's raining to hang their stuff inside and it takes forever and it creates dampness and I'm not convinced that that's better. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I have four kids, so it's an efficiency thing for me. There's no way I'm not using a dryer, <laughs> but um, yeah, but it's okay. I do, I do like when it's nice out um, try to hang my clothes out there, try to get my kids to do that um, because I think it's good to to do that. And I just love the, the feel and the smell and it is very nice um, having that. So that's cool. That's different. And number 15, the eggs that you buy here are so beautiful, like so orange. So like the, the yolks in the U.S. are yellow and here they're orange and they're so beautiful and all the eggs are brown doesn't matter just saying that all the eggs are brown um I don't know why it almost feels like not natural now if I see a white egg I don't know why that is I'm I'm sure that there's like all these reasons why they're the different colors um and I didn't research that for this video because I have 20 things I'm trying to get through but uh yeah and they're not refrigerated here because they don't um like the U.S. makes them go through this other process which then requires them to it's like a, a cleaning process that they go through in the U.S. and then it like is required to be refrigerated after that. So, and then also like once eggs are refrigerated, they need to continue to be refrigerated. So it's great. I mean, I can't tell you. So like if you're coming here and you're looking for the eggs, they're not in the refrigerated section. It took me a while. Okay, number 16. When you go to the toilet in New Zealand, there's two buttons. One is for like a stronger flush and one is for a softer flush, and that's for like if you just go number one or number two, I think you can figure it out. <clears throat> but just thought it'd be helpful to mention that, that these are just totally normal things, and they have some of these in parts of the US uh, and different parts of the world, and so you may be familiar, but if you're not, when you're flushing the toilet, there's generally two or three sometimes um, buttons to push, and so that's what it means. It's a way of being uh, saving water and uh, just not overly flushing things when we don't need to. So yeah, and the water levels are much lower here than in the U.S. And so it kind of freaks people out, I guess, when they travel to the U.S. I've heard a lot of Kiwis tell me like, why is the water, like, is the water going to come out? So yeah, so it's much lower. They're just more conservative about the water, um, which is good. 17, we're on 17. Also, the outlet switch is, the outlets have switches on them. So to turn it on and off and to apparently save on electricity. I don't know how much it really saves, but it's an actual process. Like that is just something that I haven't gotten used to. I haven't gotten used to like actually turning it off all the time. I've gotten better, but like people will literally come to my house and start turning them off. Like it's just normal to have them off. I don't even notice it, number one, because I'm not used to having a switch on my outlets. <laughs> 
it is a kind of a fun, cool job for children to kind of go around and turn them on or off, depending. Like if you're gonna be gone for like a month, you would probably just go around and turn them all off. But yeah, so there are switches on outlets to save on electricity. Uh, and number 18, can we talk about Mufti Day? This is a total, so story time. When my, when we first moved here and they, the principal said, oh, tomorrow's Mufti Day. I was like, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretend like I know what that means. How in the world would I know what that means? I don't know. I just thought it was like an activity that they were going to do. So of course we show up full uniforms. Nobody else is in uniforms and my kids are traumatized because they would really like to wear their own clothes <laughs> and they're young and so it's a big deal in primary school and so there was tears and I was like okay I didn't know what mufti means and the fact that you have to pay to wear your own clothes now I understand that it's for fundraising activities but mentally it's interesting to me I'm gonna pay you so that my kids can wear their own clothes so I think like fundraising around like something else would make sense, but that one always weird to me. <laughs> and Mufti, like where does that name come from? I feel like I've put this on my TikTok before and they've told me, but it's not coming to me as to what um, Mufti means. And, and I think it's actually is associated with fundraising, but like you just don't know that inherently in the name. And so, yeah, so if you're coming here and they say Mufti Day, they're referring to dress down day. Number 19, story time again. My kids went to school. I was helping out as much as I could. I was one of those helpful parents. Um, not as much anymore. You know, you kind of get to that point when you have four kids like, I've done my time. Okay, you know, but no, I should help out. Anyway, um, it was like a craft fair I think it was like there was just like stalls of things that we were selling and I said that I would do the one for our school and I volunteered time so I showed up and we were selling worm we I wish you could have seen my face when they were like we are selling worm we first of all what <laughs> Worm we like worm pee. It's not worm pee. It's I don't know, something from. Anyway, it's a fertilizer for your garden. It's a liquid fertilizer, and they call it worm we. It's like uh, it's just from like the worm farm. It's like the excess. I don't think it's actually we, but that's what they call it. Yeah, totally normal in New Zealand to sell worm we at a craft fair. Okay, and number 20, as a kickoff to the Christmas season, they don't sell eggnog at the supermarkets. No, they don't. They don't sell eggnog. And if you are in New Zealand and they sell eggnog at your supermarket, tell me where. I bet you I could get them to ship it. Tell me where. You have to make your own eggnog here. This is very disappointing. I love eggnog. And I've made it every Christmas because that's the only way I'm going to get it. But yeah, it's totally normal not to sell eggnog at Christmas here in New Zealand. They sell other things. They have, okay, at Christmas here, maybe we highlight a couple Christmas things that are different. Um, crackers, is that what they're called? Christmas crackers, that's what they're called. There's these little things and they pop and they make a pop and like things pop out. And sometimes they'll have like a little crown that you can wear or a special treat inside. And so like before you eat Christmas dinner, people do the, the Christmas cracker. Honestly, you guys, I was here for three years before I've ever even realized that that was a thing. <laughs> so there's Christmas crackers. That's different. I've never seen that before. And Christmas mince pies, very popular. Does that sound like something you want to eat? No, it doesn't. Here's the clue. The mince in New Zealand is ground beef. And so when I hear Christmas mince pies, I think it's meat. But it's actually minced fruit and nuts. It's like minced fruit and nuts. So it's actually really good. If you get it homemade, some of my friends make it. It's like, oh, so good. So it's just basically minced fruit in a pie crust. So good. 
So that's different for Christmas. Um, so yeah, those are, I'm trying to think, oh, and then like fruit cakes is an acceptable thing to bring to a party. Not like our Christmas vacation, um, where they bring a fruit cake and it's like, huh, nobody actually eats fruit cake in the U.S. I know that you can buy it. Like I remember seeing it at Aldi once, but yeah, fruit cake, not a thing that you eat, but a thing that you eat in New Zealand. So that's also different. Well, I could probably go on and on about Christmas. But anyway, this has been long enough talking about the 20 things that surprise, that may surprise you coming to New Zealand that are just totally normal here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video this week and all the lovely bird sounds. And thank you for Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to click on the link below to get 10% off your website or domain. Guys, I just would love to know what it is that you would want me to talk about as I start planning for next year for this channel. So please come below with uh, any topics you'd like me to cover or thoughts on things you'd like me to share. I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's episode on the 20 things that surprised me about New Zealand. And I will see you next week.